Okay, we are going to figure out what's the Laplace transform of t to the n power, and this is how we are going to do it. We are going to use the fact that the Laplace of e to the a t power, this is the same as saying 1 over s minus a, and we must make sure that s is greater than a in order for this to work. And along with this, we also need some other tools. And the tools that we need is some series expansions of some functions. So let me write this down, series expansions. The first one that we need is e to the x. And e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x to the third power over 3 factorial, and so on. And we can just write this as a sigma notation as the sigma x to the n power over n factorial. And let me make a note right here. Um, if I just write sigma right here, I really mean to say the sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity. But like, let me just save, uh, save me some steps by not writing down the 0 to infinity every single time. Because um, that's like the most powerful series right here that we're going to use right now anyways. Okay, so which one are we going to apply to? We're going to use this applying to e to the at. And let's focus on e to the at. And let me just mention that when you have um, this series expansion, this right here is true for all x values. Okay, the radius of diver the radius of convergence um, is true for all x values. And right now I'm looking at this as e to the at, and then this is centered at zero. So what we can do is we can just plug in at into x right here, and that's pretty much how we can find a series expansion for this one. And now the matter is just let me write this down nicely for you guys. This is equal to summation, and now the x is going to be let me open the parentheses and let me put the at in red inside of the parentheses to show you what exactly is going on. And we have that raised to the nth power. So it looks like this. And then we have that over n factorial. Then e to the at is equal to the summation. And this is the same thing as saying a to the n power, t to the n power over n factorial. And this is one of the things that we are going to use um, for this part right here. So let me just call this equation number one. So these are the series expansion that we're going to use, the first one. And now let's look at the second one that we have to use. We're also going to use the series for one over one minus x. And this one is just one plus x plus x squared plus x to the third power, and so on. And in sigma notation, this is the same as saying x to the n power, just like that. And however, for this case, um, we have to make sure that, let me just put on the work, make sure that this is a geometric series. The only uh, the condition that for this to work is, we have to make sure the absolute value of x is strictly less than 1 strictly less than 1. Okay, now we have 1 over s minus s minus a. We're also going to write a series for this. And you see that in order for us to write the series, we must have the 1 right here. However, we have an s, but it's okay. The way that we can take up this is we can uh, factor out an s. So it's going to look like 1 over s times 1 over, now this will be 1 and we'll have minus, I will have a over s, a over s. Let me put this in red for you guys. So we're going to have a over s for that. And perhaps I can also put in the parentheses to make it look well, better, I guess. Okay, so one over s is just one over s. But then one over one minus a over s. Keep in mind that we know we have a condition that s is greater than a. So therefore, right here, when you have a over s, because s is greater than a, so of course, um, if I divide both sides by s, I get 1 is greater than a over s. In another word, um, 
a over s is less than 1. So because this number right here, this part right here is less than 1, so we can use um, the expansion for the, uh, like I show you guys right here, for this. So this part right here is nothing but just the sigma, and we have um, inside which is the x, which is the a over s. Let me put that in red. A over s. We have that raised to the n power. Just like that. And now perhaps I can do a little bit more cleaning up. This is the same as saying 1 over s times the sigma a to the n power over s to the n power. And of course the s times the x. I can factor, I, I can distribute this inside and I will get this as sigma a to the n power over s to the n plus 1 power. And this is a series that we're going to use for 1 over s minus a. And let me box this. And I'll call this um, equation number 2. So it will be easier for me to refer in to this thing. Okay, so now this is how we are going to do it. We see that we have a Laplace of e to the at. So we're still going to keep the Laplace. And I'm just going to use the bracket, like this kind of bracket for a Laplace transform. And the e to the at, it's this. Okay, it's this a series. So this right here is the series a n, a, I mean a to the n power, t to the n power over n factorial. And then, so this is by number one. Then, the second part right here is equal to 1 over s minus a. This is what we did right here, which is the summation a to the n power over s to the n plus 1 power. And let me put this down right here. The summation a to the n power over s to the n plus 1 power. Now, what we can do is, when you have a Laplace of a sum, it's a sum of a Laplace. And let me just kind of take that for granted. I'm not going to talk about anything technical, so just kind of let me just say, we can do that, and then it's going to work, and you will see the result. So the first thing I would need to do is, I can switch the sum and the Laplace. So let me just take this out, and the Laplace will be going inside, and we'll be looking at Laplace of, let me write this as a n, a, a, a to the n power, over n factorial, times t to the n power like that. Oh, I should use the curly bracket like that. And now we're equal to the sum of a n, a, a to the n power, um, s to the n plus 1, just like this. So far, so good. Right? And perhaps let me, this is not t, this is plus 1. And now, let's see what can we do with this. Um, when you have a Laplace, and keep in mind the input functions is in terms of t. So Laplace of a function, the t is something that's like the variable that you want to be inside. And then the a to the n power over n factorial is considered to be constant in the Laplace world. So I can um, bring this outside of the Laplace transform. So we are going to get the summation. And let me bring out the a to the n power over n factorial, and we can look at this as Laplace of t to the n power, just like this. And that will be the same as the summation, a to the n power over s to the n plus 1 power. So this is a plus right here, by the way. Okay, that notice that this two sum, keep in mind right here what I wrote down, so these two summations right here is meant to be 0 to infinity. So they have the same index. And this is how we can, this is what we can do. I can bring this to the left hand side and I can just kind of merge this into just one, one sum. And it's going to look like this. The sum, and let me open a big parenthesis. Since I bring this to the other side by subtracting, this will be equal to 0. And then the inside we will get a to the n power over n factorial Laplace of t to the n power and we have minus a to the n power 
over s to the m plus 1 power. Okay. And notice that these two, these two terms, they both have a to the m power. So I'm going to factor out the a to the m power as follows. Summation. So the first part I will get, let me write this as Laplace of t to the m power over n factorial minus, and I'm going to factor out the a n, so this will be 1 over s to the m plus 1. And now I will have the a n right here, and that will be equal to 0. So it's technically the sum like, like that. Okay, and here's the third thing that we need to use in terms of uh, uh, what we can do with series. So this is like the, the third thing. And the third thing is that um, if when you have an infinite sum where an infinite sum that um, with some sequence, okay, so with some sequence bn, this is a sequence bn, and you multiply that with x to the n power. So if you have a series like this, and bn are the sequence, if you have this, it's equal to zero, and if it, you know that's true for all x value, so if you know this is equal to zero for all x value, then what you must have is that the coefficient has to be zero. So all the bn's right here has to be zero for all n. Okay. So let me kind of. Um, be careful, but like not too technical or anything. Let's look at this right here. So it's an infinite series, and you can treat this as like a polynomial in A, a polynomial in A. So um, you can see that this part here, it's kind of like my Bn here, right? And then the An, it's kind of like my x to the like my x to the n power. And we know that this is equal to zero for all value of a. And how do I know for all value of a? Because uh, that's pretty much how it works. You can plug in any value of a right here, right? So, so this is what we have, a to the n power, and we know this is you know, true for all value of a. Anyways, the, the punch down right here is that you have to just need to make sure this is equal to zero. All the bn has to equal to zero. So all the bn, all the coefficients have to equal to zero. Then we can just conclude that the Laplace of tn over n factorial minus 1 over s to the m plus 1 power has to be equal to zero for all n. And of course, our goal is to figure out what's Laplace of t to the n power. So I can just subtract this to the other side, and I will get Laplace of t to the n power over n factorial it's equal to 1 over s to the n plus 1. One more step. Aha, so exciting. The Laplace of t to the n power. Well, I can just multiply both sides by n factorial. So the n factorial goes to the top. Will go to the top. So n factorial over s to the n plus 1. And this is what we want. Okay. Thanks for watching.